Hello guys, in this video I'll be talking about do video games actually affect health and uh, this is uh, there is a reason why I did this research and I just wanted to share with a bunch of people on the internet so they know if they play video games the repercussions of that either positive or negative so let's go ahead and learn about that now, in recent years, everyone has their own theory about gaming. Now, many software developers see themselves in a competition with others to synthesize the finest art possible, maintaining the preferable graphical reinterpretations. Okay, and the history of gaming seems to be following some evolution of vehicles, some some sort of idea, some notion that follows through, which people seem to like a lot. Let uh, take it, Call of Duty, for example. It's all war-based war games that has been revolutionized or added some graphics into it and people keep on buying the same old thing, the same old idea of gaming again and again. It's just a region, next generation of Call of Duty and uh, people seem to like it, the notion. Now, I've collected um, the, from various websites uh, from the report of Spill Games that more than 1.2 billion people actually play um, games worldwide and what, what I meant to say is just imagine the number of people actually are obsessed with the game um, and that made me think whether or not why there are some leading causes in certain areas in the United States there is a, um, there's more chances of kids who are under 18 to be more obese and uh, rather than kids in India so this made me think and that's why I started the project and my views on this project would be uh, would not be very biased because um, previously in long time ago I also used to be a gamer now I'm not and so I don't completely hate gaming uh, however I don't prefer it as well so I asked those people who actually like it and who don't. Now take take just take television for example. One needs to take into account that there is good with bad. Okay. Now let's take uh, people for example, and the number figures we saw 1.2 billion do not actually contain all the serious gamers. Take me for example. I used to play games, but I I was not a serious gamer. Now these two people here, uh, most of them, most of you already know. The left hand side gentleman is known as X Joss, and the right hand side guy is known as uh, Woody's Gamer Tag. I think they both upload video about gaming, about several different types of gaming clips, such as Call of Duty, Battlefield, and more. More games on um, more games like such as such as that, um, and what they do is particularly they try to achieve the highest score possible and play very smart with playing objectively and um, they upload gaming videos to help other people improve themselves in gaming genre. So they actually do it for money and that's their only hobby. I mean that's their only money resource. I can possibly think they can have uh, apart from partnering up with different uh, gaming networks now their first moving on to first problem and most of them I already mentioned it before that uh, body mass index so let's go ahead and take a look at body mass index now if you look at it um, in the United States 91% uh, uh, 91 percent of people who are between ages of 2 and 17 play video games and a nationality uh, play video games of 99% um, of boys and 94% uh, of girls. Um, what they do is that uh, they do not move frequently and all they do is just uh, sit somewhere and even though they're, they're processing their mind frequently and every second the body is not actually moving and because of that um, they, they play games for hours and hours if you let them so what actually happens is that the body becomes lazy and therefore the food consumption as we take in more and more because we are doing mental processing work uh, we tend to get more hungry and because of that if we are getting hungry and we don't move our body as much what this results in increase of BMI and another thing that I wanted to talk about is that Look at the number of consoles uh, that has 
consoles and uh, these are the brand new console that uh, I think they came out uh, this year or previous year Xbox one on the left hand side and a PS4 on the right hand side of course uh, P uh, PS4 has 80 million sold and uh, Xbox one has 78.2 million uh, console sold and all the statistics are I'm um, getting in from real site information like from Microsoft and Sony how many they have sold uh, this year yet up till now and uh, what I want to say is that most of the people 25 uh, what usually happens is that once uh, once a kid or children or perhaps an adult starts playing the whole uh, their whole mind is actually um, captivated in the gaming and they can think less about the outdoor activities they can do and things along those lines any any sociable uh, work um, they would not prefer because think, think thinking logically if you play this type of games you can interact online with other people so they don't feel the need to do so when uh, need to go outside and do the same thing when they can sit at home do something they actually like and then do the same thing that people prefer to do socialize with other people so maybe that's why people try to um, game a lot and that's why they like it and look at uh, here's um, Wings of Redemption I believe if that's the correct name he goes by and uh, he you can uh, buy the pictures I'm not trying to criticize anyone but uh, from the pictures, um, I can tell that this uh, guy over here is also a very serious gamer. He is uh, absolutely killer at playing uh, Call of Duty and uh, at um, like uh, Call of Duty and other games. Uh, I totally respect him for that. However, uh, he plays games a lot as well, and before because of that, you can see the body mass index of. Uh, this person. So this is one of the main flaw that video can games can have on uh, one one person. Uh, going to the next one is the vision problem. And uh, vision problem. What happens is that most video games require lengthy involvement to finish any particular game, forcing the player to stay focused on the screen during their playtime. Now, what happens because of that is that what you get is headaches, blurred vision, and even nearsightedness if breaks aren't taken to relax your eyes. Now, what people do is that they, uh, let's take a look at this picture. Now, we know what actually vision problems can do to us. However, when I looked at the National Geographic researchers, what they found out is that the ability to contrast uh, sensitivity function actually allows people to dis, uh, discern even subtle changes in shade of gray against a uniformly, un, uh, uniformly colored backdrop. So, so to uh, reiterate that in really simple and sophisticated language is that when a guy is playing Call of, when a guy or a girl is playing Call of Duty, even the slightest change uh, needs to keep in uh, mind for them to actually get their scored streaks, killed streaks, or play, or perhaps play the game better than they could play ever. So they have to account for every single variable change that has to go in the game. And even though it does require a lot of focus, uh, it actually natural geographic scientists believe that it actually helps the vision power. And uh, unlike the common uh, common um, phenomena that if you keep uh, looking at if you keep paying attention to gaming, you might uh, make your eyes hands bad, uh, something like this. New National Geographic, uh, National Geographic has totally different take on this. So, so that's that. And uh, perhaps I do want to mention that not all type of gaming has this problem. Like for example, I'm considering um, heavy duty gaming such as Call of Duty. Take FIFA for example, take Battlefield for example. However, if you're just on your cell phone playing uh, Fruit Ninja or perhaps uh, um, jump some kind of uh, jumping game, the uh, flapping bird or something like that, it's just some particular small type of thing that you might do as you are as you will wait for a dentist to get your appointment or something along those roads. 
what actually happens is that uh, if you keep playing the game those type of small type game it does not you are not going to be affected by it however what happens is that if you do keep that game playing let's say for hours and hours and you are addicted to it then uh, there is a sign of uh, problem that you might be affected by that problem and um, let's go to another problem now disease now you might uh, don't worry you might not get a cancer because of playing video games what the disease that I'm actually talking about are um, the ones that uh, like such as depression 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 is a disease now video games people the gamers uh, especially when I took a survey in my school video games are a way to exp uh, way to escape the things that are costing uh, people into this depression now one guy published um, uh, article a Singaporean guy who uh, who took a um, survey from 3,000 people in Singapore and they said that they played more than 31 hours in a weekend which shows that um, they have no social activity or when they try to stalk those guys what happens is that those people when they're not playing they either are depressed they have social phobias and they feel awkward when they're having a conversation with an adult or someone else just a normal com conversation and they have this anxiety to keep go back to their house go back to their room and start playing their favorite game whichever game it is and what what happens is that this type of uh, things actually cause uh, disease to people if they are way too addicted to it so uh, I would say refrain that, from refrain yourself to getting at that particular point. So uh, there we can see the relationship between the gaming and depression. And I have no found no article that would suggest that uh, gaming and depression are not related. So whether you play Angry Birds on train in to go to work or slice slice some fruits on your tablet when you are waiting at the dentist or spend 8 hours perfecting whatever game it is like double A or something to pass through some level to beat your friends it's still it's still going to affect you I mean if you're going to play things competitively to beat everyone else and play for hours and hours then you are you can tell yourself that yeah you're one of kind that is affected by the depression or some kind of anxiety or some kind of depression that's going on with you and you have a disease for yourself okay now one thing let's go to positive aspects of gaming now what this actually does is uh, gaming actually helps the hand-eye coordination like in this picture all you guys see is a guy kicking a soccer ball into a goal however when a guy who is playing FIFA he has to know the movements how to uh, get his attacker, uh, the striker in this case, through those midfield and then uh, into the defense and how to shoot accurately so that the goalie, goalkeeper would miss the, um, uh, miss the ball and the ball would then go in. So there's lots of things, lots of variables that goes into just shooting a ball. So when someone's actually shooting a ball, it's not just shooting so many things go into uh, how that um, player tactically comes in the field and shoots the ball so there are a few things that gaming do help the hand-eye coordination like I said and uh, although we we mentioned few points few bad points and few good points the hand-eye coordination and some uh, how it uh, improves this mental thinking uh, so how do we cure those problems is there any solution well, yeah there is so what happens if you uh, what about BMI let's take for body mass index so what you can do is that after playing for 30 minutes or 20 minutes you can take a break for 15 minutes and move around just walk around your house and see how things are going next vision problems for vision problems what you can do is just sit the best uh, best solution for this is two uh, two solutions for this 
Well, you, you put your monitor, whatever, whatever it is you play a game on, and you make yourself distance from it. And um, if you can't do that, if your room is concise, what you can do is after playing for 15 minutes, take a five or three minute, three to five minute break and go outside, look at the greenery, so your eyes not um, becoming nearsighted. So you have to look things that are far away as well. And uh, next thing for depression and different kind of diseases, anxiety and social phobias, what you can do is that after playing, after taking care of all those things, you can actually go out with your friends, have some social timing, have like real time face to face conversation rather than Skype call or headset uh, call, talking with somebody. So things like this will actually help you um, avoiding from being at that peak where you actually enter the disease zone where you can uh, be affected by uh, depression, sociophobia, or anxiety. And um, that would be it for my research. And I really hope that this video um, actually gives you an educational value and things you need to look out for yourself. So yeah, and thank you for it. And tell me how you like it uh, in the comment section below. So that's it and goodbye.